Okay, so this is what I showed you in the last class and I told you the basic principle uh, behind uh, radiographic testing lies to the question as to why these bones appear white and we have discussed about it. And now as I told you in the last lecture, we can uh, get an expression uh, for this particular phenomena that leads to uh, this kind of contrast or appearance that particular relationship or uh, equation uh, will be forming the basis of radiographic testing. So, let us uh, discuss about that in today's class and see the basic principle behind uh, radiographic testing. Okay. So, let us say X-rays are travelling through a substance of uh, thickness x. So, this is the initial intensity I naught and after travelling through this thickness, the intensity coming out uh, from this substance is I. Okay. So, as I said when x-rays uh, travel through a substance, there will be uh, some interaction between the x-rays and the matter and as a result of which some of the energy of the x-rays will be absorbed by the material. Okay. So, this I which comes out uh, from the material will be lower than the initial intensity I naught. Okay. So, this uh, fractional decrease d i by I naught and since it is reduction, we will use the negative sign. This is proportional uh, to the thickness or the distance that the X-rays travel through. Okay. Okay, now, if you introduce uh, the proportionality constant here, which we will call as mu and let us say this uh, travels through a distance d x. So, the fractional decrease will be proportional to d x and this is the proportionality constant mu and mu is known as linear absorption coefficient which is a material property. Okay, so, what do we have? Uh, we have this now. This is the fractional decrease which is proportional to the distance uh, travelled by the x-rays. Now, if you integrate this, this is what uh, you will get. The intensity I is uh, from the initial intensity which is I naught to an intensity at a distance x which is I x. And on the right hand side you integrate x over 0 to a particular distance x. Okay and from this you get on the left hand side ln i x by i naught and if you integrate the right hand side you get minus mu x. 
and from this you can write that i x by i naught is equal to e to the power minus mu x. And now, this will be the basis of radiographic testing. Okay, so, as you could see uh, the x-ray energy decreases exponentially with the thickness of the material okay, as you could see from here from this particular equation. Okay. Uh, but when we discussed about uh, the radiograph of the hand, if you remember we talked about uh, a material property which was density and then I also told you the contrast that you see is due to the density difference between the bone and the flesh or the other body parts. But in this case, we still do not see that uh, density coming into picture. Okay. So, that means uh, we need to introduce the density and then we can clearly see how this uh, x-ray radiation or the x-ray energy will depend on uh, the density of the material uh, when it uh, comes out from that particular material. So, we will rewrite uh, this equation as So, we will introduce the density rho and we will rewrite it in this fashion. Okay. So, now we can define another parameter which is known as m and given by mu by rho and this parameter is known as mass absorption coefficient. So, this particular parameter uh, is a better representation of the absorption ability of a material because uh, this provides you the volumetric ability of the material to absorb uh, extra energy. Okay. So, now if you use this particular relationship between m and mu and the density of the material, this equation comes down to this form. Okay. So, now you can see that when you vary the density of the material, what is going to happen to the extra intensity which will come out from this material. Okay. So, as you could see as you increase the density, uh, the extra intensity will reduce exponentially for a given uh, material thickness. Okay. And that is why you see the bones white on a radiographic image because the bones have the highest density in our body. So, they will have the maximum ability to absorb x-ray energy compared to any other part in human body. Okay. So, this explains uh, that particular contrast that you see on a radiographic film based upon uh, the density of the part uh, which is being uh, imaged in the radiograph. Okay. So, this will be the basis for our radiographic testing. Okay. Uh, but the question here is uh, why does the intensity of x-rays uh, decrease uh, when they travel through a particular material. Okay. So, that means, uh, some kind of interaction must have happened inside the material when x-rays are going through them. Okay. So, let us talk about uh, those interactions which is the x-ray matter interaction and then we will see due to this kind of interactions which are known as uh, scattering of x-rays are responsible for this particular phenomena of absorption that we talked about and that is how it forms the basis for uh, radiographic testing. So, when you talk about radiography, you have to talk about interaction between x-rays and matter. And we all know that 
any substance is composed of atoms. So, that means, when you say that x rays interact with matter or a substance, it essentially means that the x rays are interacting with the atoms when they are traveling uh, through a substance. So, x rays will interact with the atoms and they can be absorbed due to this interaction or scattered. And then a part of it will be transmitted uh, through the substance with a reduced intensity. Okay. So, all this thing the interaction uh, between the atoms and the x rays will lead to attenuation or reduction in the x ray energy. Okay. And this is why you uh, see that fractional reduction and that is how that particular equation comes into picture which we just now talked about. Okay. So, let us see what kind of uh, atomic absorption phenomena happens when x rays travel through matter. So, these are primarily uh, scattering events that means scattering of the x rays by the atoms of the material and there are different forms of atomic scattering and one of them is known as photoelectric scattering. So, this is the atom you have the nucleus and then electrons around it in the orbitals. And when the X-ray photons enter the material with a certain energy E naught, they will encounter these atoms and with the electrons inside the atoms. Okay. So, in this case what happens the X-ray photon uh, will eject one outer electron and as a result uh, the X-ray photon would lose energy. Okay. So, if you see the en energy balance in this case, this is uh, the kinetic energy which is given to the electron when it is ejected from the outer shell of the atom. Okay. So, the electron will not only be ejected, it will also be given uh, a kinetic energy because of uh, the high energy x-ray photons. And this is the energy needed to eject the electron from the outer shell. And this particular parameter is called work function, which is the energy needed to eject an electron from an atom. Okay. So, a portion of uh, the extra photon energy is going into ejecting the electron first which is this phi naught or the work function and the other portion is going into providing the kinetic energy to the ejected electron. So, that is why this extra photon energy E naught is being balanced by these two. Okay. So, 
So, this kind of absorption uh, phenomena is a dominant absorption event in up to extra energy of 0.5 mega electron volt. Okay. So, this is uh, one such uh, atomic scattering events uh, which leads to absorption of X rays. The second one that we have is known as Compton scattering. So, in this case also again uh, the X ray photons are going to interact uh, with the electrons in the atom. So, in this case what happens uh, the X ray photon first ejects an electron. and loses energy in the process. This low energy photon is then further scattered uh, by the atom. Okay. So, here two different phenomena uh, simultaneously are taking place. First the ejection of the electrons and due to that process uh, the uh, X-ray photon loses some energy and that lower energy uh, photon is further scattered by the atom. So, if uh, in the beginning if it is lambda, so this lower energy photon will have uh, a different wavelength lambda prime and lambda prime is greater than lambda because it has now lost some energy. Okay. So, this energy balance now if you take so this is this is the energy loss. and this energy shift depends on uh, this scattering angle theta. Okay. So, it can uh, you know get scattered again by different angles like this or like this and so on. So, how much energy it will lose uh, that depends on the scattering angle and that is why you see this scattering angle theta coming into picture in this case. So, lambda in this case is the wavelength of the incident uh, X-ray photons. Lambda prime uh, is the scattered wavelength. H is Planck's constant. M e is known as uh, mass of an electron at rest. C is again the usual parameter which is the speed of light and theta is the scattering angle. So, if E amount of energy is being absorbed by the ejection of the electrons. 
then the remaining energy is E minus E naught. So, this energy shift as I told will depend on the scattering angle. The next one uh, is known as uh, pair production. So, in this case uh, what happens do you have the atom and the electrons so in this case what happens uh, when the x-ray photon comes in it ejects uh, an electron and a positron pair and that is why the name uh, pair production Okay, and if you see the energy balance for this, so the energy of the photon is absorbed to create this uh, masses for the positron and the electron mass. And for creating this uh, mass the minimum amount of energy which is needed for each is 0.5 5 1 mega electron volt and uh, that is why uh, the x-ray energy in this case must be above 1.02 mega electron volt if uh, pair production has to happen because that is the minimum energy needed for creating the mass for the positron and the electron. Okay and any extra energy that the x-ray will have that will go into uh, providing this kinetic energy to the electron and the positron. Okay. These uh, positrons are not stable, so they disintegrate into two photons of gamma rays of energy 0.5 mega electron volt each. Okay, so, this is how uh, this particular process happens. The next one that we have uh, in this series is known as Thomson scattering. This is also known as Rayleigh. or classical scattering and in this case uh, there is no loss in the energy because the scattering is elastic scattering meaning the x-ray photon does not lose any energy when it is going through the material. Okay. So, it just goes through without losing any energy and that is why this is known as elastic uh, scattering as there is no change in the energy of the x-ray photon. Therefore, uh, this kind of uh, scattering event is not really relevant for radiography because radiography as we have understood by now is based upon some amount of absorption into the material which gives you that contrast that you see on the radiographic image. And the last one that we have is 
known as uh, photo disintegration. So, if you have very high energy uh, into the x-rays, uh, they can uh, penetrate uh, through the atomic uh, orbitals and go all the way down to the nucleus. So, in that case instead of interacting with the electrons of the atom, the x-rays can interact directly with the nucleus okay? and in the process uh, they will eject a particle from the nucleus which is known as a nucleon. So, in this case what happens uh, if you have higher energy as I said the x-rays can penetrate uh, through the electrons and go all the way to the nucleus and from there it can eject a particle from the nucleus. And this particle is known as nucleon. And this can happen when the x ray can have an enormous amount of energy. Okay. And because of this enormously high energy which is needed for this process, this is again not relevant for practical radiography because that kind of x-ray energy levels are not generally used in the x-ray source which is used in uh, radiographic testing. Okay. But if you have energy uh, in that level, uh, this kind of phenomena can happen which is known as photo disintegration or in short it is also known as PD. Okay, so, these are the different types of phenomena uh, that can happen inside a material when the x-rays pass through it and because of all these scattering events, some of the energy of the x-ray will be absorbed by the material and that is how it forms the basis for radiographic testing as we have already discussed before. Okay. So, with this I am going to stop here today, the rest of the things that we have uh, for this technique uh, will be discussed in the next few lectures in the coming days. So, for today I will stop here. Thank you for your attention.